Hi, Dr. Fisher here. I'm here to talk again about one of our very, very important frequently asked questions. How is Fisher traction better for you or safer for you than other tractions that are out there in the market? And one of the key components to Fisher traction is based upon research and designed to help maintain the normal curve in your neck and your low back. Under a textbook normal neck, we have this nice smooth curve that runs throughout the neck from top to bottom. You also see the nice thick spacing in between each bone. You see how the, how the bones are lined up on top of each other in perfect alignment within that curve and maintaining and holding that curve. That curve is vital because as we move to the next phase, we can see here in phase one where there's a loss of curve and the neck is straight. Now, this is an example of what we call today tech neck or texting neck or computer neck. The curve in your neck is lost because of the head positioning of looking down, looking forward. Also, too, moms can get this from talking to their kids all the time. Now, the weight distribution of your head, which is about eight to 10 pounds, vertically comes down and compresses down into the discs, where when you have the curve, the curve allows the weight of your head to be deflected more towards the back of your neck across the bones that are designed to hold the weight of your head. But when you lose the curve in your neck, now all the weight is going more forward and down on each disc. The discs are not designed to hold all of the weight of our head long term. So then what you see going into phase two is you actually see the process of degeneration, intervertebral disc degeneration, dehydration. You see bone spurs growing. You can see that the intervertebral discs are narrowing. But the scariest part about it is you can see the bones growing and trying to bridge across each vertebrae to fuse that down and lock that down. And this is years of accumulated calcium depositing, uh, bone spurs you know, are attempting to fuse and, and, and cause malfunction of the joints. Adjacent surfaces of the bones are rough and uneven. Um, you can get joint instability uh, accompanied by nerve irritation. All of this is permanent. It can't be reversed. The disc can't be increased in size and grow back. You know, all you can do with the bone spurs is you have to cut them off and you have to do that surgically. Now, if you go all the way over to phase three, after years of neglect, where you can see the bones are actually fusing together, you can't even see any spaces in between the vertebrae because the intervertebral disc, that soft cushiony portion, is virtually gone. It's been reabsorbed, and now the bones are just connected together, bone on bone for the most part. Kind of scary to think about it, but this is, is the end result. So. The key to this is that any type of traction that forces the loss of your neck is going to ultimately cause this process of degeneration in your neck. Many of the home traction units that are out there, not Fisher Traction, but our competitors, their traction devices are designed to either pull the spine straight or worse than that, pull your head forward into the tech neck positioning where you not only you completely lose the curve in your neck, but it causes a reversal of the curve in your neck. We're going to show you some examples of what this looks like and how Fisher Traction is different from that. And you can see how Fisher Traction helps maintain and actually helps create more curve where these other devices do the opposite. We have Ram here, who's our physical therapist. The first thing that you should notice is right here, you can see my hands. I can put my hands right underneath his neck so that curve is maintained in the neck. And 
ram's head is still resting down on the ground where his muscles can relax. You can see the angle of the pull is really, really important too. Just about 30 degrees, which is an ideal angle of pull uh, for the neck because at 30 degrees, you can get right in the middle of the neck and up towards the occiput. Um, but with a 30 degree pull, you can get the whole neck, even though you're emphasizing more right smack dab in the middle. But again, it's all in efforts to maintain and promote that curvature in the neck. Research studies have shown that when you have curve in the spine during traction, your benefits are greater. And that is for the low back and for the neck. But that angle is perfect. You can see the curve in his neck is all maintained and he's able to, at this angle, with this pull, he's able to use his release strap um, for the decompression process. So now we see this setup. Now we're gonna show you what the competition looks like. We have this setup at a more extreme angle. I'm not sure what they're attempting to do, but we're not even putting ram in traction at this extreme of an angle because it will hurt his neck long term. But we just have it set up so you can see the difference in the angle. Now this angle is, that's like 50 degrees, which is an extreme angle. With this setup, obviously with that high of an anchor point, it gets him closer to the door. So if somebody were to open the door at this distance, it would probably hit him in the head. So one, it's more dangerous for an immediate reason, but long-term wise, what we're concerned about is with this steep of an angle, when it pulls, you can see I barely have to use any pressure. It immediately lifts RJ's head off the table, okay? Now, if you were to lay in this long-term, if you see his neck, it's going forward. So now we're losing the curve his head's going forward like he's looking at his cell phone texting or sitting at the computer. Um, long term, this is not ideal. It will do damage to your discs because you'll lo lose the normal natural curve in your neck. So it can't really handle any true traction pull force. It's more just like lifting your head up off the ground to a point where you know this could just slip right off. But with that type of angle, um, you don't want a lot of pull force. And again, with other devices that you'll see that have this high pitch, they're only using a single tube of, of latex tubing, which maybe offers up to 10 or 15 pounds of pull force or lift force, just enough to lift your head up off the table, but it has nowhere near the amount of pull force the Fisher Traction has with our patented design of the negative G-force technology, this can pull up to a maximum of 50 pounds of pull force. Long term, the, the desired outcome of traction is spinal decompression. So you have to be able to create a negative pressure inside the disc where it sucks or retracts any bulging or herniating disc away from nerves. In my opinion, minimally, you need 20 to 25 pounds of pull in the cervical spine to get any real benefit or therapeutic value of traction and to accomplish decompression. Now I'm gonna show you real quickly how Fisher Traction works in the pull in comparison to others. Now, if you put five pounds of pull force in Fisher traction, it, it barely moves, it barely moves. And of course, five pounds is way less than the minimal 20 to 25 pounds of pull force that you need to accomplish any type of decompression in the cervical spine. 10 pounds is about enough to, to lift your head up off the ground, but it's still far less than what's necessary to create any therapeutic value of traction to create decompression. And again, you know, with 10 pounds, Fisher traction barely moves at all. Minimally, 
you need at least 20 to 25 pounds of pull. Now you can see at 20 pounds, Fisher traction just starts to just starts to stretch. Okay, and then if we go up, we add another five pounds. You know, minimally, you can accomplish a real therapeutic value of traction where you're going to have a long term effect. Here's another 10 pounds to add on to that 25 pounds. Now we got 35. There it goes. Pulling, no problem. Now here's another 10 pounds. That gets her up to 45 pounds of pull force. 50 pounds is about the maximum that the human neck can handle. That's about right at the maximum capacity that Fisher traction can handle. Anything above this, those bungees will break for safety purposes. But as you can see, with Fisher traction, you're gonna get the maximum amount of pull that we can handle as humans, where you are going to accomplish uh, decompression. You're gonna get a real true therapeutic value, way more pull than anything else out there. As an example, I wanted to show you what this plastic model demonstrates and how important a real therapeutic level of traction is to the spine and how it can help long term. Our spine, when it loads, our discs are designed to hold some weight, not all the weight, but some weight. And you can see how there's some play and some cushion in that disc. Now, what happens if we get a disc bulge or herniation, you can see how that material, the nucleus will bulge out and it'll go right into the nerve. Walking around, you know, it's pushing out all the time. You lay down and it relaxes a little bit. It might retract just slightly, but to get that thing to pull back in and off that nerve, you need to lift those bones and pull them apart where you get that negative pressure inside the center nucleus. So light traction might give you a little bit of temporary relief, but it will not give you a long-term decompression outcome like Fisher Traction can. That's why Fisher Traction is so much better than the competition.